What is up all you minties, this is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition, and join me as I do an overview of these four books from Marvel Comics. So, please stay tuned. Now before I get started, thank you so much to David Gabriel, the folks at Marvel, for sending us copies of these books. And also, these books are already available, they've come out in the last couple of weeks. But I wanted to do overviews of them because I've had so many requests and so many questions to do these. So we're going to kick it off with Young Avengers and then moved from left to right. So kicking it off with Young Avengers. This book retails for $34.99. I'll be taking a shot of the all the spines. Uh, collecting Young Avengers 1 through 15. This is the 2013 series. And Marvel now point one number one. Just the Young Avengers story, which is what you see here which is the interaction between Miss America and Loki. And as you can tell from the cover, this is a different team up than the Alan Heinberg run of the classic Young Avengers. This was also previously released as an omnibus format. And now it is a complete collection. So this is the Karen Gillan and Jamie McKelvey series from 2013. So a follow-up with a new lineup. So you have Miss America, you have Kid Loki, or just Loki to some. You also have Wiccan and Hulkling, Marvel Boy, and Prodigy of the X-Men. And I love seeing Marvel Boy as that is one of the most underrated characters since Grant Morrison introduced him. And sadly, he's just been so not <laughs> used properly. Uh, but this is the kind of artwork. This is the same team that did Phonogram. This is the same team that did Waken and the Divine. So here is Young Avengers. 360 pages. It is practically the same thing that the Omnibus is. Now, I can't flip too much through here because there are some changes to some of these characters. And I don't want to spoil it for anybody. But let's look here through the back to look at the variants. So you have the Brian Leo Miley, which is the cover to the Omnibus, or maybe it's the cover that I got, I can't remember if there was a variant or not. The Scotty Young cover, and the variants to issues two, three, four. Uh, there's the Jimmy Chung, who was the original artist on the original Young Avengers. So this is a follow-up, and I'm willing to bet that when, this is the uh, follow-up, no, this is the follow-up to the original series, and over here is the original series, I'm sure. Yeah, the original Young Avengers Complete Collections. And I'm sure when we have a TV show, this is probably the lineup we're going to be looking at. Ah, damn it, I forgot about Hawkeye. She is also in here. We have another one of the X-Men Milestones. This is the Messiah War. It retails for $24.99. Uh, this contains... So... Uh, okay, so the way that it, this is done is it goes Messiah Complex, Messiah War, and Second Coming. That is the Messiah Trilogy. So this contains X-Force and Cable, Messiah War, number one, the one shot. Then it crosses over into Cable, issues 13 through 15, X-Force 14 through 16, and then the Future History, and then the Messiah War source book. Okay, so here's some of the source book, by the way. This book has 258 pages. I love when they include stuff like this in these books. This has phenomenal artwork by Mike Choi, Clayton Crane, Ariel Olivetti. I believe that's how you say the gentleman's name. Uh, and this is during the Yost and Kyle run of X-Force. And it's pretty much the team of X-Force and Cable are teaming up against Bishop. And that's all I will say for the life of Hope Summers. Now, this was previously released, trade paperback format, and this oversized hardcover. This oversized hardcover, however, contains Bishop, the little miniseries, the three-issue miniseries, one, two, and three. This does not, so that's the big difference, other than the, of course, size. So here we have one that I'm very excited to talk about. You guys have been asking me to do this, and I was waiting for the hashtag to get it in. So this is Mephisto, Speak of the Devil. Here we have a collection of his earlier appearances. Uh, from Silver Surfer number three, his first appearance, all the way up until the 80s and 90s. All the way up until... Actually, no. There is an issue here from the New Mutants. So we're talking late aughts. Yeah. So right before 2010, 2011. Uh, this also, for the first time, contains the four-issue miniseries Mephisto Versus. So it kicks off here. 
Hey, that was pretty good page turning there. I just got lucky. Mephisto versus the Fantastic Four is issue number one. And I remember I was so confused <laughs> because I was going to the comic book store and I was looking for issue number two, not knowing that issue number two was called Mephisto versus the Fantastic Four. Issue number three was known as Mephisto versus the X-Men, which is right here. And then, of course, issue four, this leads into Mephisto versus the Avengers. So I had no idea that they were all the mini, the same miniseries. This also contains the best Doctor Doom story and probably one of the greatest Doctor Strange stories, and that is Triumph and Torment, written by Roger Stern and drawn by Mike Mignola. This is collected in the Doctor Strange Triumph and Torment epic collection, but it is also found in here in case you don't have that. We also have issues of Anna Shanti's run. So basically this collects Thor 180 and 181, Fantastic Four 276, Amazing Spider-Man 274, that Mephisto versus miniseries. I love the way that John Romita Jr. kind of reimagined Mephisto. Uh, we have the Triumph and Torment graphic novel, Daredevil 266, and Silver Surfer 45, Black Panther. Actually, let's get to the Silver Surfer issue here. Kind of give you a glimpse of Ron Lim's artwork. Then moving on to the Mark Texieria from the Christopher Priest run of Black Panther. And then New Mutants 37, which wraps up the run. So it also has Black Panther 4 and 5. And here is New Mutants 37. So it's pretty much just about every appearance of Mephisto. Okay, most of them, right? We don't have one more day. This book has 456 pages and again retails for $39.99. Forgot this was the fight between Mephisto and the Beyonder. For those of you that like to look at the spines, here's a closer look so you can pause the video here. And also don't forget to hit like and subscribe because we put out videos every day. Now let's look at this What If Classic. It is finally here, the last What If to complete this nice run of classic what if the series that began in 1977 i think and went all the way to 1982 83 uh this is just missing one issue and that is issue 16 because of copyrights with fu manchu so let's look at volume four and talk about the contents so here we have volume four. I love that this feels like an epic. That's how thick these are. Here are all the writers. Peter Gillis, I remember being the primary writer on most of these stories here because this collection is issues 36 through 47. So we're looking at the tail end of the classic What If series. Um, now, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, there, you know, in total, I think there are a total of 13 different volumes. And what I mean by volumes is each time they restart the series with an issue number one, that's a different volume. So in the 90s, for those of us that grew up in the 80s and 90s, the 90s had their own series. And I believe that is volume three, if I'm not mistaken. And those are the ones I cannot wait to see collected. Uh, some of my favorite stories in here, though, have already, like, are actual canon in the 616 universe. Like... What if Conan was walking around in modern times? What if Conan uh, battled Thor? Here. I really like these little anthologies. So there's like three stories in one. What if Beast and Thing had continued to mutate? And there are some dark stories in here, including some dark artwork. Uh, speaking of artwork, who kicks it off is John Byrne with his classic, What if the Fantastic Four had not gained their powers? I believe this is also part of the omnibus. By the way, can I just say how morbid it is for this cover to have What if Sue Storm had died? Like, that's a pretty dark story, and to have it in on the cover, this is the Thor versus Conan the Barbarian. What if Doctor Strange had not become Sorcerer Supreme? And if you've never read these, these are just alternate realities. They're wonderful stories. And some of these may feel outdated because, like I said, a lot of them are canon nowadays. Yeah, this is the story right here. Like, Sue dies at childbirth, I want to say. This is taken from, like, the annual number six. So it helps a little bit to know some of the history of the Marvel Universe. But by no means, you're missing out on anything. Oh, yeah, this is a classic. Uh, oh yeah, towards the end of the run, we have uh, Bill Sienkiewicz doing the covers. Because I remember the cover of Conan with the gun. 
Just look how awesome that is. What if Hulk went berserker? Which, of course, he has. Yes, right there. What if Conan were stranded in the 20th century? Done did, man. But anyway, I love that Sienkiewicz cover. It's very iconic, at least in my eyes. And then, let's look at the back here for some of the final issue. So here's issue 47. What if Loki had found the Hammer of Thor? This is the final issue of the volume one. What if classics? And I will say, if you've never read these, most of them, like I want to say 95% of them, do not have a happy ending. So if that's your type of story, this is definitely not for you. 488 pages. Let's look here in the back. Nothing as far as extras, just the covers to... I think some previously released trade paperback classics. Yeah, when they were the thinner trade paperback. So this is What If Classic Volume 7. That's the cover. This is $39.99. And again, 488 pages. Now, if you're interested in purchasing any of these books, check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off the cover price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on packaging your books so they arrive safely and in excellent condition, as well as prompt and helpful service. And check out their bargain bin for even greater deals up to 90% off cover price. And for you minties, Cheap Graphic Novels is renting a special promotion. If you're a first-time customer, let them know you were referred by Near Mint Condition at the checkout, and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for U.S. customers. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discounts, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the page count and the contents of each of these. Let me know in the comments down below what you're picking up, if you're picking up the what if, if you've never read any of the Mephisto stories, if you missed out on the Young Avengers Omnibus, or if you missed out on the Messiah War oversized hardcover. And, or you just get trade paperbacks, because I know several of you are trades only, which is wonderful. But reading your books, that's all that matters to me. So please don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe button if you haven't subscribed yet. What are you waiting for? We put out videos every day. Ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. Remember, I'm doing a live stream tomorrow at 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's just a Q&A, and we'd love for you all to join us. And again, this was the Uncanny Omar. Thank you all for watching. And remember, stay healthy, stay safe out there, and much love to all of you.